Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Bendenun, and you're watching Israeli News Live. Today we were up in Caesarea, got there a little bit late, was hoping to get there a little earlier to where we could get to the amphitheater and uh, share one of our teachings with you uh, about the Apostle Paul. Nonetheless, though, they have added a new uh, scene there and have dug up a lot more artifacts uh, that were very impressive to get to see that was available to the public after visiting hours. And so we went and we had dinner there and we watched the sun as it set on the Mediterranean. In fact, the restaurants there were built on the very dock where Paul caught his ship when he said to the, to the Jewish authorities that he was a Roman Caesar, a citizen and he appealed to Caesar to hear his case. I could not help but think, though, as we sat here in this restaurant and watched the sun go down, that once again the gospel, the gospel that Paul actually took, who was a Pharisee, who's actually related to the very Jewish, Orthodox Jewish people that are here in Israel today, the purity of the gospel that he took, is returning to Israel in like manner in the way that it left from Rome back to Israel. Can't say exactly how God will fulfill that, but I just thought it might be something interesting to note to you. We'll be speaking later this week from Caesarea and about the events that happened to Paul there as he was judged by the different Roman dictators and by the high priest of Israel at that time. Uh, I wanted to bring to your attention though Mahmoud Abbas, so you can see pictured here in the background with Pope Francis. And I really thought I would take a little time to share with you one in the news what is going on here in Israel. Uh, he has put forth three more demands uh, that he would accept and he would allow the negotiations to be extended another nine months. Interesting how these nine months keep popping up here. Uh, but nonetheless, he did. He, he brought up another proposal. One would be uh, release the murderers, the, the, the terrorists here that are in Israeli prisons. And of course, Netanyahu has said he will not release Israeli uh, citizens that are terrorists. And, uh, and also a freeze to the building in, uh, in East Jerusalem, which Naftali Benet is also refusing to do that either. And so it really comes down, we, don't, we want to get into the third result there, but I really have begun to really ponder this. And I thought as hard as I am on Abbas that maybe I should actually do a broadcast that would speak to him directly. And so Mr. Abbas, if you happen to listen to this broadcast, I wanted you to know, especially as I think about the setting sun over on the Mediterranean Sea, in Caesarea, do you realize that what's happening to you is prophesied in the very Bible that both Jews and Christians believe, the Tanakh? The Christians call it the Old Testament for the Jewish people. It's the Word of God. It's the prophets, the writings, and the Torah. And this book actually has prophetic words written in here about you. And yet the thing is, is it's up to you in which way you choose your own destiny. And I'm not talking about, when I say this, it wouldn't do you any good to become Jewish. But it could really benefit you if you would realize who the true Messiah really is. Who really is Mashiach? So if you do happen to watch this video, because I know there are many Palestinians that do watch these videos as well, and this message would be to any Palestinian that would watch this video. In fact, I will intentionally try to, uh, to do the SEO work in a way to where Palestinians will see this. I'm hard on you guys in many cases. I've even suggested that Obama loves the Muslim people so much that, well, why doesn't he take the Palestinians in? But you know, in reality, what every Palestinian really needs is to know that Yeshua, Jesus of Nazareth, was indeed Mashiach. In your time, 
is now to recognize who he is. In fact, your time has been for a long time. Because soon Israel will recognize who Mashiach really is. They will realize because Mashiach will come to Israel very soon. And when he does, he will fight against everyone that is an enemy of Israel. And right now, there's many Palestinians that might watch this video tonight or in the coming days, and you might think of Israel as your enemy. But true Christians know the ones that really believe Yeshua to be Mashiach, they're not replacement theologists such as the Pope here would have you believe. True Christians stand with Israel and know that they're anointed and chosen of God for this very purpose. They also know that the judgment of God is going to bring every nation here to Israel for judgment in, in a very near future. And so this is an opportunity for you, yourself, to recognize who the Messiah really is. And so I sincerely, I'm going to share with you some scriptures that are written about you, your people. And Mr. Abbas, I say this sincerely to you. This is your opportunity. If it's never been presented to you before and you do see this video, I sincerely ask you to seek to know who Yeshua really is. Yeshua HaMashiach, the Messiah that came to redeem all the house of Israel, both the house of Israel and the house of Judah. And as well, to fulfill the promise to Abraham to be a father of many nations. And so therefore, there would be Palestinian believers that would come in this day, and perhaps you are one of them. If not, you will end up on the enemy side of Israel as you're standing now. And if you end up being an enemy with Israel, you will be an enemy with God. And I'm not talking about Allah. And I'm not talking about the Catholic God that they serve. Now I realize there's genuine Catholic people that really love God. But the Jewish people, we know that the word of God says, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Well, you know what this means, my, my friend. It means here, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one God. We don't have two gods, nor do we have three gods. We have one. And Yeshua, God himself, was manifested in this man. Let me share with you what the Word of God actually says. And I share this with every Palestinian that might listen to this news broadcast. Because in light of the demands that keep being made on Israel, you're totally missing the picture. You're being a pawn. You're a pawn in a game of chess, a charade that is played out by the Vatican. Just as Israel is being duped by the Vatican, you're being duped even greater. And I'll show you why. If you go to Daniel chapter 9, we get here near uh, chapter verses 25. And I'll just share with you a little bit here. And this is where it speaks of the 70 weeks of Daniel. It says, Now therefore, know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem until an anointed prince, the anointed prince is the Mashiach, okay? An anointed prince uh, shall be seven weeks, then for 62 weeks it shall be, um, excuse me, be seven weeks, then for 62 weeks it shall be built again with squares and a moat, but in a troubled time. After 62 weeks shall be an anointed one be cut off. Now that was after 62 weeks. Just a quick note for those that believe that there is only three and a half years left in Daniel's 70 weeks. That anointed prince is cut off exactly, see, what? After 62 weeks. Now, 
shall no one be cut off, and none shall be to him. So actually, 62 and plus the 7 is 69 weeks. There are 70 weeks determined. So at that point there, when Mashiach or the anointed prince is cut off, there's still one week left. Then it says, and a people of a prince that shall come. Now see, this prince is not anointed. But it says here, and the people of a prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Titus, the Roman general, came down and destroyed the temple in 70 AD. Well, clearly it says here, there is a prince that shall come, and he will be of the people that destroyed the city and the sanctuary. But he's not an anointed prince, not like the other prince that was cut off, not for himself, but for you, Mr. Abbas, for the Palestinian people, for the Gentiles, and for my own people, the Jewish people as well. And as it goes on to say, and his end shall be with a flood, and to the end of the war desolations are decreed, and he shall make a strong covenant with many for one week, and during half of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the offering to cease. And upon the wing of an abomination shall come one who makes desolate until the decreed destruction is poured out on the desolator. Now, it's interesting about this prince here and that he's a Roman. The man on the screen in the background, Pope Francis, he is a Roman. In fact, he is Peter the Roman. As many of the famed books that are out today speak about Peter the Roman. The prophecy from their own ranks that speak of Peter the Roman being the last pope. And of course, Pope Francis is by birth parents of the Romans. And of course, as Peter, we know that he's the Roman as well. Over in the 11th chapter of Daniel we find something else written that is about this prince that, that shall come. And I wanted to share that with you as well. Um, starting in verse 23, And after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully, even upon the fattest places of the province. And he shall do that which his fathers have not done. Back up. And after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully. For he shall come up and shall become strong with a small people. He shall enter without difficulty even upon the fattest places of the province. And he shall do that which his fathers have not done. Mr. Abbas, the Palestinians are the small people. Pope Francis, the Vatican in general, is using you as a pawn. Your people, the Palestinian people, are being used as a pawn to come up strong on the fattest provinces. The Temple Mount, King David's tomb, and many other sites in Israel the most sacred sites to Jews, he is trying to take. And to some degree, he will be successful for 42 months. I'd like to also share with you another place as well. Because it wasn't just the prophet Daniel, but the prophet Ezekiel as well prophesied of what he would do. In the 35th chapter, right around the 5th verse, it says, Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred, and hast hurled the children of Israel to the power of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time of their final punishment. That's when the Vatican threw the Jews to Hitler as God was getting ready to bring us back home. 
That's, that's that scripture there being fulfilled. Therefore, as I live, says the Lord God, that is Hashem, by the way, I will prepare thee to blood, and blood shall pursue thee. That's the Vatican. Surely thou hast hated thy own blood, therefore blood shall pursue thee. Now, what is it their own blood? They claim to be Christians. They claim that the blood of Yeshua is what they stand for. But they've hated that very blood that was shed for them. And so therefore God sends blood after them. Thus will I make Mount Seir most desolate and cut off it from it who come and go. And as you can see from the video in the background, just like yourself, Mr. Abbas, and all the other dignitaries of the world, in fact, this video is for them as well. Mr. Putin, John Kerry, Barack Obama, all the dignitaries around the world, this video is for you. Not just Mr. Abbas and the Palestinian people. It's to anyone that wants the opportunity to know that Yeshua truly is Mashiach. This video is for you. This is your hour. You're watching history unfold before your eyes. And you're not realizing how many of you are sitting in the wrong seat. He goes on to say, And I will fill its mountains with its slain men, and thy hills, and thy valleys, and thy watercourses shall they fall that are slain with the sword. I will make thee perpetual desolations, and thy cities shall not have restoration. See, if you'll notice, Israel fell, and it was prophesied that she would be desolate. In fact, Yeshua himself prophesied and said, your house is left to you desolate until you say, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hmm. Interesting, isn't it? So Yeshua prophesied of the destruction of the second temple, but he also prophesied of the restoration. And so therefore, there's going to be a third temple bell. And that's right at hand. And ironically, Yeshua or Israel will recognize who Mashiach really is at that time. As we move on, it says, And you shall know that I am the Lord, because thou hast said, These two nations and these two countries shall be mine. Mr. Abbas, and I also address this to Mr. Naftali Benet, my brother, and my brother Benjamin Netanyahu. I think Naphtali Benet really understands this right here. And if he's never heard this one before, and I'll send this to you in an email as well, Naphtali, so that hopefully you will watch this video as well. Mr. Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, Ezekiel chapter 35 speaks of the Vatican's desire. It speaks here, it prophesies that the desire would be to split our nation. You know, even if there's not a technical, a technical dividing of the land, according to the United Nations and according to the Vatican, who basically rules the world because Satan's seat is where, there's, where the Pope's seat is, we're already in a situation now where it is two nations. We have borderlines. And Abbas, you claim that you're a nation under occupation. But in reality, sir, Israel belongs to God's people, the Israelites. He has given the, the Arab people lands and kingdoms. And you could dwell in peace in those kingdoms and those lands that God allowed you to have. In fact, the Gentiles are given the rest of the world. One small nation belongs to Jew the Jewish people. This is our heritage. This is where we belong. And this is what you need to respect and recognize yourself. And the only way I can see Mr. Abbas or any Palestinian that listens to this video will ever be able to do that is you yourself must recognize who Mashiach is in this hour. And only then will your eyes come open to recognize the anointed of God 
is Israel. So he says here, and you shall know that I am the Lord, because thou hast said these two nations and these two countries shall be mine, and I will possess it, though the Lord was there. <laughs> this is where God came. This is where Hashem came. Mm. Therefore, as I live, says the Lord God, I will do according to thine anger and according to thy envy, which thou hast used out of thy hatred against them. And I will make myself known among them when I shall judge thee. So when we see God's judgment come down on the Vatican, at the same time, he's going to make himself known to Israel. And I want to share with you one other one too, Mr. Abbas, just so you'll be aware of this. In the Christian Bible, in Revelation chapter 11, let me share this one. In Revelation 11, it says here, And there was given me a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. But the court which was without the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. And the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed." These have power to shut heavens that it rain not in the days of their prophecy and have power over the waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lay in the street, the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them and they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them which saw them and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them come up hither and they ascended up to heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them and the same hour was there great a, a great earthquake and a tenth part of the city fell and the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to God the God of heaven the second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. Mr. Abbas, let me just say this to you just as sincerely as I can, sir. The prophecy, even from the Christian Bible, will only give the Gentiles, which are your people and the Catholic Church, 42 months. You will not have self-autonomy over Jerusalem. What the Pope intends is to make it He's trying to bring in the millennium. Let me just say it this way. He's trying to bring the millennium without being God's way of doing it. He's trying to make Jerusalem to be a city, a, 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 the city for all nations. It's one reason why the prophecy says that people, let me back up and read that for you. And they that dwell upon there, let's see, back it up a little bit more. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues of the nation shall see their dead bodies three days and a half. That tells us right there that Jerusalem is made a place for all nations to come in. The United Nations will actually be in control of Jerusalem at that time. Yes, as you believe, East Jerusalem will come under Palestinian control. It'll actually be United Nation control because that's exactly how Shimon Peres planned it. And Shimon Peres, let me say this, because I have criticized you extremely hard. I've called you the son of Ahab. But you know you too, my friend, have the opportunity to repent. Because I realize, and God knows, that the Jewish people have done these things mostly 
because of being blinded and not recognizing what's going on. But it has been a major disgrace to the Jewish people, though, that you would have sold out the Jewish people to the Vatican. You do have an opportunity to repent. I trust you will take that opportunity swiftly. Because when God sends the two anointed ones of Zechariah, the two witnesses of Revelation 11, judgment will begin to fall upon the world. God will begin to stand for Israel like never before. And Mr. Obas, when the two witnesses come, my friend, you will no longer have this opportunity to accept Yeshua as your own Savior. Every Palestinian that listens to this newscast, I encourage you. You don't have to have a preacher or anybody else. All you need to do is go to your knees and you ask for Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, to come into your heart. Ask Him to reveal His self to you. Let him know that you realize something is pulling in your heart, that the hour is late, and you don't want to be caught up in the midst of this struggle. Because you will find yourself fighting against God. This is not a battle over a Palestinian state and a Jewish state. The Vatican is just, it's, this, this conflict is really belongs to God. And it is Satan. He is trying to get his little hands on this place. And it's a losing battle. It is a losing battle. I just read to you, you'll only get it for 42 months. Is it worth it to you? Is it worth it to your families? You know, you need to really do some serious research serious research and find out the very Jesuits, the ones that have come out that know that your Bible was written by a bunch of monks in northern Africa because Muhammad couldn't write nothing. In fact, his own wife, Kaji, who was a Roman Catholic, said that he become possessed as if he was possessed of demons. She began to fear him in the end. He got worked up by a bunch of monks. You were much better off when you didn't have Muhammad. Now the opportunity you have now, because many of you are descendants of Ishmael, whose father was Abraham, that is a common heritage you do share with the Jewish people. And God told Abraham he would be a father of many nations. Well, the promised seed and the promised son is actually Yeshua. I only encourage you, don't miss this opportunity. Please don't miss it before it bypasses you because you do not want to be here when judgment begins to fall. And you think it's bad when the two witnesses begin to testify here in Israel wait until their death comes. Then it won't just be them. It'll be God Himself bringing His judgment down. And you do not want to be here. You do not, you do not want to see God's wrath unleashed. You speak so much of a jihad, you have no idea what kind of jihad. Jihad is nothing in the sight of God. And the God of Israel that will come down and will protect the Jewish people that are here in this nation today have paid a heavy price for the gospel to go around the world. And although they may not agree with me right now in what I'm saying as their own brother, they may not agree with that. But let me tell you something. Soon, you will see God loves Israel Regardless of what her mistakes are, he still loves her. That's his wife. And you're messing with the apple of his eye. Wake up before it's too late. I'm Stephen Bendenu. 
you're watching Israeli News Live.